like and subscribe to the 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I like well, thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing TV. I'd like to welcome everybody to Let's Talk Racing. You got myself, Roger Brain, Jack Dodson, and Scott Allen over there playing with each other, I reckon. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> no, he had to go there, did he? <laughs> he must know something about that, I guess. Hey. And we also had, have Scott's fan club here tonight, so. Yeah. <laughs> All one of them? All one of them. <laughs> I'm glad we got enough room for them to kind of open this place up the next time we have one. <laughs> I heard you were going to do an autograph session. <laughs> Set aside 30 seconds. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Good thing we locked the door. Oh gosh, yeah, we're turning folks away. <laughs> so what's going on? Well, we just had all the fun from the K&N race from Langley Speedway. Ben Rhodes got his fifth win. Fourth, Fourth in a row. row. Fourth Dude, in this row. kid is hot. I yeah. mean, At, you yeah. know, I thought in the beginning, I said he's going to get out front and he's going to burn the tires up. But he didn't. Nope. And actually nope. at the end, he pulled away. I mean, he, what he had said later, I seen him post later, that he was... Uh, Saving his tires, he just kept. But you know, I will say, I don't know if you noticed, if you watched his car come off the corner, he was straight near about coming off a four or come off a two there, where everybody else was sort of, you know, coming off the corner. He had like he already had his car turned and it was just sort of sort of straight coming off the corner, which I'm sure it helped save the tires a lot more. And he has got he has got the ace crew chief. Who's this crew working chief? with him, McFarland. Okay. Damn, Mark. I knew I forgot somebody I was supposed to go meet. Mark. Mark McFarland is his crew chief and, and and I talked to Mark at the racetrack and you know, they he don't have to do a whole lot. He says the kid is a natural, so Yeah, I mean uh Oh yeah, you wouldn't believe how many people I was talking to and hearing it from him. Oh, he's gotta be cheating, he's gotta be running traction control. I was talking with Ben, he says, Yeah, all you gotta do is that traction control is right here in that foot, that's all I need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, he's yeah. good. I mean, he's got yeah. good equipment. I mean, he's got yeah, Turner Scott. Scott. I mean, Turner Scott equipment. So That's like the Rick Hendrick of, of nationwide and everything. Yeah. yeah. Now, now what would you think about Kenzie running up there in, in second place for a while? I was, I was hoping she pulled that off. I was, you know, she got up to second, and I was thinking, hey. And then she ran him down at one time, but I don't know, yeah, how, much she, she, she I don't know how much she ran, she ran him down, mm -hmm. or She's he right. eased off of it a little bit. To, but Yeah, I think it was a little buzz. But the thing is, I mean, she had that was an impressive run for her. Where'd she end up? Third. Third yeah. Yep. Yeah. She ran about eighty laps to go. She was tapping on his bumper, and I talked with later on, and uh, he said, "Yeah, I had to get on there with the spotter and tell him to go talk to her." I said, "We still got eight laps to go. What the heck are you doing?" <laughs> well, but probably the first time she's ran that good. Yeah. And that competitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, she's in good equipment. But I was really disappointed in Greg Galden. I mean, you know, I, I'm. Well, I learned one of the guys I race with in Arena, that's his, Grace's father is his wife's cousin. Apparently, he's quite the salesman, which so just doesn't surprise me. Well, I mean, he's, look at the money. He's, look at the money he's got back in him. I mean, he's got yeah, Krispy Kreme and True yeah. Moo and. What's that, that, um, that but that, that team hasn't run. I mean, they ran well at Bristol, but they haven't really done that well elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of resources, but I don't think the K&N cars are coming out of the same shop as the trucks and stuff. So I don't know if they're getting the same resources. Oh, what it, it, um, for, NT. for for NTS? Yeah, yeah, all of them are coming out of the same place. I thought they had a, another shop for the K&N. Well, I mm -hmm. thought they had one in California too. Well, that's for the that's for the West guys. Yeah, that's for that's for when. Um, Brandon goes out there and runs on the western side of everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, he, he has two drivers out there, too, that runs uh, not the K&N West Series. It's the one underneath it. Mm -hmm. Bob was telling me, but he's got two guys out there. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, he, he, there's two different operations. Yeah. But he, I mean, what, he qualified? No, no, he didn't qualify. He qualified well. Yeah. Gray did, but uh, really did Well, they had a spark plug wire come off there. Yeah, that's what, like when Grace went by, I was down three and four, and I heard that noise, and said, what in the heck? And later on, I found out, yeah, that's what happened, and his wire came off. And Brendan had a, he was having a good run. He was working his way up through there pretty good until he got into that thing with Sergio. And 
Well, I think Sergio got a little impatient there. Well, I'm, I wasn't going to go into who did what, <laughs> but I, um, we we know that Sergio and him were involved. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's pretty sad because we know both of them, and you feel bad <laughs> like trying to talk. Oh yeah, remember what was it? No, Chase Pistone was on a part of the race team too. Chase Pistone, he's running the race this weekend. In Austin Dillon also. Yeah, so it was um, Super Shoe. He's going to be in the truck and the nationwide Ooh. driving a ninety-eight uh, LaJoy. LaJoy, yeah. He's driving uh, the Biagi the car. Mm -hmm. Biagi domestic the car. Which truck he's driving? Um, and good for him. I know they practiced today, and he was ninth in practice. Well, it was a test. That was a test. It wasn't really was practice. It was, that wasn't practice. Mm -hmm. That's, they went. They went out a day early so they could do the do a, do a test. Was that the nationwide cars? That's the nationwide cars did that. Um, uh, I heard them talking to them. That tomorrow is their tech day, and uh, the trucks tech today. The cup guys tech tomorrow at twelve o'clock. And I'll tell you another way. When we both seen him after the race was Kaz. I mean, he He's, come on strong there at the end. I don't know if he just saved his stuff and then. He just, I mean, he flat drove them last two or three laps. And you could tell when he got out of the car, boy, it was well. <laughs> yeah, he was breathing awful hard when he got out of the car. He, and when I leaned in to shake his hand, he was, <laughs> he was doing that number. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but he had a heck of a run there because he passed what four or five cars in the last ten laps there. I mean, he he, he drove and, and just barely got fifth there. That that was that was good. I was glad to see him. Cause he's, what did something happen to him earlier in the race? So he kind of went to the back, and I think he come back through the field or and something. Tore the back end of the car. Yeah, he got into something. And, and something yeah. happened there. I don't know if he maybe he was in that first wreck. But I know one thing: he flat drove the rest of that race, and and the guys on the team were really excited. With yeah. Him. yeah, yeah, rightfully so. Because who, who was he driving for? To uh, turn turn Scott. Okay. Hecker, Hecker is a Turner Scott car. Ninety six, ninety eight, and yeah, well, yeah, Cameron Haley. So it was. I mean, it was a good race. I mean, I I had a blast. It was well. Uh, I enjoyed all the other racing out there. The first race. Uh, the first race, man. That I'm gonna tell you what. That first race. That night was unbelievable. And I want to congratulate you. You did. <laughs> you did. I don't even know where I ended up. You you did you did wonderful. You passed one car. You did. Good. <laughs> and, I, did. <laughs> I, did. I was doing good. You did good. Yeah, good. Yeah. You did good at the start, but when you fell back, you were so funny. and I don't know who you were running with. What at the end? No, no well, the, the, at the very end you were running with somebody else. But the one you were running with before then, yeah, the seventy one. That, that person, that person looked like they were just. Man, wish you'd get off me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because he was trying to root me up. I kept blocking him. He kept pushing me, and then finally he got me up, and and I, there was no more blocking. I wasn't paying attention. You got to pay attention to your mirrors. Mm -hmm. But what? Well, so, so actually, how did you finish? I don't even know to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how mad I was. But of course, they they said that my team says that they were talking about the last race. I uh, finished well, but but didn't qualify that well. He <laughs> said, so, "I'm gonna mess this card up every week because he's been here four days all week." <laughs> you were, you were fifth there. there for a little while, huh? You were in fifth there for a little while. Uh, no, not me. Yeah, you were. Your yeah. card number was up there, but after the next group started qualifying, then you uh -huh. got off the board. Oh, that's telephone. Producer, good. Let's stop racing. Hey, Tiger. Uh, I'm still waiting for him to call. No, he only gave me his off the the shop number. <laughs> Do me a favor. You got his cell number? All right. Well, so we'll, we'll might as well kill some more time. What about you? Guys? <laughs> But yeah, the, the guy you ran with, or the person you were with first time, I couldn't tell it was a guy or a girl. But you, that that person didn't look like they were, you know, they went. I out wasn't with, in his room. Yeah, you, know, you just. Yeah, you didn't. Know, he's an older fellow. But, but uh, this guy that uh, owns the cars, what's his name? Mark. No, 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 no. The other guy, what's his Wickhauser? Yeah, Eric. Eric Wickhauser. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he come up and said that you know I, I'm sure he's gonna cry after tonight's over. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we pickled each other. Like, we've been pickled each other all the time. Like the, you know, you know, like the last race at Arena last year, they changed it to Rain and Men on me. When I walked out there and they introduced me, it was Rain and Men, and then the whole crowd just started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but I told you to watch out because see, you know, I get a microphone and people they talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I got him back at right, the banquet problem. last year. I told him to right. come out of the closet. Okay. So I want to welcome you out of the closet here. <laughs> oh, I want to go. To, I want to go to one of the marina bank banquets, if, it's a, if that's the kind of fun y'all have there. Call well, if I go, that's what we had. That's what we did. I understand this time. It was you know who that was, right? Uh -uh. Tiger Tom. Oh, okay. He was on the call to ask some questions for Jesse. I said, be nice if he was here. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but anyway. Did you like the spot I got you for, for, for watching the race? Yeah, we did enjoy that. It was yeah, a good was good. Oh, you get him up in the skybox? No, no we oh. just stood up on behind the garage there. Oh, okay, on the little spotter's, po mm -hmm. yeah, spotter's yeah. nest. Yeah, it was kind of nice. Let's see. Yeah, see, pretty good over there. Oh, best spots up on top of it. But what what bothered me was though was one of the when one of the track officials wanted to know you know why you wasn't racing because you had to. <laughs> and I'm thinking this here's one of the Langley officials don't even know who he is. Uh, right, right. I'm like, cool, dude. He's, he's uh, aren't you racing? Aren't you gonna race? See, well, that's how that's how good I look. Oh, oh god. Well, yeah, you can go out and get a Jimmy John's Outfit. suit. Yeah, you can. You probably Sunday. do look good. You probably, it was good for my um, they probably think Johnny you, Rockets food sponsor. You probably look good walking through there. <laughs> but the good thing about your card is they can't see what you're wearing when you get in it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can still keep that, you know, that, that persona that you have. Before I get in the car, yeah, yeah, you can keep that once you get out because they can't see who you inside. And you know, and I was really shocked, and, and I'm glad you clarified it for me because I really thought you had a GPS in your car. Why? Huh? That thing looked like a GPS sitting there, and I said, Now this guy got to have a GPS. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you got to know how fast, how, how much you're turning, and then your temperature because if you start pushing somebody and your temperature goes up, that means the cart in front of you is too tight. You need to let them go. You need to root them up off the bottom to push them, mm -hmm. get them out of your way. Mm. What you say? We going, we going. I'm looking up the some way to tell where you finished at and everything. There are the champ carts at the top right there. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to feature race right here. So. Yeah. I qualified 18 and probably finished 20th. What's your car number? 28? Yeah. Didn't have 20 28. 20. 20. 20. Qualified 20th? No, I qualified 18th. I was going to be good. Fastest mm. lap was lap 3. Yeah. Well, Danny, uh, Danny Mallard, Mallard, whatever his last name is, he's funny. In the 10 car, he was supposed to start behind me. He's like, I'm going to push you. I'll stick with you the whole race. And that's what you need. So if you just yeah. stick together, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I said, all right, well, then um, the boy that sang the national anthem, he runs with us, but something happened to his motor, so he packed this stuff up. So then it moved him from behind me because I qualified him, so it went from him, it changed the line in order behind me. Yeah. So then he went to the bottom. I was like, oh, I thought we were friends now. And he's like, no. Well, <laughs> you lost out. <laughs> yeah. I think he wishes he would have just done it now because. He ended up in the back, although I seen him down in the ditch. I went to this one, it's like, you know, this thing's a four-wheel drive. Next one's Nick Harris. Let's talk racing. Uh, Jack Dotson there. This is me. How you doing, Nick? Hey, what's happening, Jack? I'm doing pretty good. How's things going with you tonight? I know you're in Kentucky, aren't you? Oh, yeah, we've been, uh, uh, it's one of the two nationwide test uh, days today, so we've been down here testing all day. So how did, how'd your test go? Everything going good? You looking good for the weekend? Yeah, everything's going real good. We actually uh, we had a test plan stuck to it, run through quite a bit of things, and uh, I believe we was quickest in first practice and third in the second practice. So I feel like I'm right right where we need to be to have a good shot this weekend. Well, Nick, how how in the world you you have got you've got them guys running good down there? I mean, even Kale Conley's been doing good. Yeah, Kale's a Kale's a rookie that's been in our car. Uh, I think four or five races, and. Uh, they show a lot of potential, and, and then uh, we've also run Matt Crafton for a race in Vegas, 
And uh, really quick in practice, we kind of had a couple miskies in the race, but uh, I, I feel like uh, I feel like we're you know pretty much perform at a level where uh, when somebody from the Cup Series like Paul Menard can get in our car, we're, we're going to be able to compete for wins like Kyle and Brad and and uh, the Bushwhackers, as, as as to speak, do whenever they come to the series. But uh, really happy with uh, the performance that we've been able to bring to the table the last few weeks, and I uh, feel like I have a great shot for Friday night. And let me tell you something. I'm going to congratulate you on that Michigan win. I was pulling for you, and I tell you what, he 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 was doing good that day. Yeah, Michigan was a uh, Michigan was a weekend that uh, I don't know. It just went away all weekend. It was real quick. All the practice sessions and uh, felt like we had an advantage on them. And and uh, we went to the race and we led some laps. And and uh, Paul went three wide on one of the last three starts and kind of got shuffled back. But we were able to rally back up there. And, but gone on that flat, but I still feel like we we might have been able to challenge him for the for the lead the way at the rate we was running him down there before we had flat. But uh, uh, it was awesome, uh, awesome for everybody at RCR, and I'm definitely proud to be here at the short amount of time and already being victory lane. And and uh, it's uh, it's just fulfilling when you make a move like I made and and uh, already been able to accomplish a goal of winning races. So uh, my team's been real solid, and I feel like we're real solid this weekend. And, and have as, as good a shot Friday night as we did at Michigan. Well, I'll tell you what, you, you, you've, done, you've done a great job since you've been over. you got a, you got a heck of a team with you. And i tell you what, even though I'm, I'm, you know, I'm older than you, so I can go on and say this, I'm proud of you, man. I appreciate it, Jack. <laughs> hey, you know that's a compliment when that comes from Jack. Oh, yeah, he, he, uh... He ain't give me the first compliment, and I've known him for about a year now. No, he, he ain't big on patting people on the back. <laughs> You do know him, don't you? Oh, yeah, I know Jack pretty good. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> hey, Nick, how, how is it that you know, how hard is it to go from driver to driver that, okay, you have to deal, that you have to deal with as far as you have to switch just about every week? I mean, how does that go? Jack, it's, uh, it's as simple as uh, you do the best, the very best you can every week. You race the stopwatch. Uh, you, you have a simulation and and uh, personalities that want you to do this or want you to do that and engineering support that uh, think this is the right thing to do or that's the right thing to do and I, I still stick to my roots of the, of, uh, the stopwatch is the, the root of all uh, speed, you know, mm -hmm. secrets as a speak and uh, whether you had uh, Matt Craft and Kel Conley, Paul Menard, Brian Scott and uh, you know my long list of drivers from where I worked at before at Phoenix Race and we had a uh, Working for Finch, man, I had a whole lot of drivers and a whole lot of good ones, and probably a whole lot of guys that weren't so hot. But you know, not, not to uh, not to talk any uh, down to anybody, but I've been able to work with uh, Bill Elliott, Stone Marlin, Ryan Newman, uh, Kurt Busch, Bobby Labonte. I mean, uh, Jacques Villeneuve, who's an F1 champion. Whenever you're, you're whenever you're able to work with guys that's been that successful, I think that. Uh, your experience working with cats like that really sets you up to the next level. Just, just from the, uh, just from the simple fact that you've been able to work with guys that are very successful, and I think you got to take that as a learning curve. And then when you work with uh, young guys or, or even uh, guys that are in their the middle of their prime, as as Kurt Busch was when we had him there at Phoenix Racing, it it just brings you, uh, it it takes your experience level as a crew chief in my shoes and really boosts you. To, uh, to be ready for, for anything that, that, you know, pretty much I experienced that at Phoenix Racing, so it's nothing new to me now that I'm in the uh, RCR stable as far as having rotate drivers. So I really feel experienced with that. I really feel like I can roll with the flow and get along with anybody. And uh, if a guy can't get along with me, I'm sorry for him, you know, and, and, and I'm easy enough going where I can say that confident. And, you know, you got the the situation where you with Phoenix, but you got a better better situation at, at Richard Childress where working with these different guys, you still have the basic horsepower, the basic the great equipment and everything that you didn't really have at Phoenix, but you do now. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, and I'm telling you, man, I, I honestly I'll, I'll say this, and and I think I can uh, back it up with how we performed with Palmenar in Michigan, but. I feel like he's a great cup racer, and he's probably one of the most, uh, you know, he's, he's underrated, and he's better than what he's rated as from media standpoint and everything else, but uh, he's, uh, he's an awesome guy to work with. He's very talented. 
and he's a, he's a winner in every series that I know of, he's raced in, that I've watched, and uh, I feel like we can win again with him Friday night, and uh, I feel like that we can boost his confidence where he can go into them cup races and keep knocking the top fives out like he has the last few weeks, and uh, uh, super cool guy to work with, and uh, it's who I've got in my dugout right now, man, so I'm his number one cheerleader, and I, and, and I really feel that we can knock another win out Friday night, and uh, if not, we'll be there for the, uh, we'll be in the mix to try to make it happen if we're not just good enough to do it and feel like if we have a good, couple good practice sessions on uh, Thursday and Friday that we'll be there. Now, um, something you and I, well, we've never talked about on this show before. Nick, how did you get your start? I mean, I basically know, but I mean, how did you get your start in racing and where all have you been? Um, my start in racing, I, I grew up in uh, Columbia, Tennessee, which is the home of Sterling Marlin. And uh, me and Sterling's son, Stedman, were best friends growing up, which uh, it probably goes back a little farther than that. But my father was a uh, my father was an orphan in, in uh, Spring Hill, Tennessee, which is a suburb of uh, Columbia, Tennessee, there, uh, just south of Nashville. And uh, him and Sterling were in the same grade or one above each other. I can't remember how it all works, but uh, Cuckoo and Eula Faye used to let my father come home to their farm and hang out on the weekends. And, and my dad and Sterling Marlin, uh, been best friends and have been great friends up to this day. You know, I think my dad still works out there for Sterling. They farm and race late models and have a big time. But uh, as a kid growing up, they had that relationship. So uh, for, for sure enough, me and Stedman were great friends growing up. And, and uh, we did a lot of racing together, a lot of hanging out together. Had a great time out there on the Marlin Farms. And that's how I got my start in racing. And me and Stedman had moved to North Carolina for Todd Brown, who had, uh, it was a brand new nationwide team mm -hmm. on racing. And, Stedman on a limited schedule and things didn't work out and I, I, he, he didn't stay there for the next season and I ended up working there for two or three seasons. I've been at Bruco Motorsports for a season, uh, car chief and David Green, which was, uh, it was a move that was closer to home for me. They were, they were located out of Central City, Kentucky, mm -hmm. which uh, me being from Nashville, Tennessee, it wasn't that far. So I made that move there and then, uh, I crew chief Stedman again in the Nationwide Series for Sadler Brothers Racing Team out of downtown Nashville. Uh, Earl Sadler and his son Chick had a team that I worked for right out of high school and uh, also went back to the 2006 season. And after that I went to James Finch's uh, Phoenix Racing in Spartanburg 2007 up until the last race season and now I'm where I'm at. So that's, that's a brief bow for me. But uh, definitely uh, love the Marlin family and, and uh, they've always supported me. And uh, that's how I got into racing, and they still support us this day. Sterling College, he's one of the first to call me and congratulate when I do something good. Well, you know, that, that had to be great about when you were at Phoenix and Sterling was driving over there at Phoenix. That had to be interesting with, you know, the, the background that you two had to be together like that. It was super cool, Jack, and it wasn't planned. I went to work at Phoenix Racing before Sterling was ever going to come to drive there. And uh, Sterling had drove for Phoenix Racing back in the day in the, the number one yellow freight car or, or whatever Finch wanted to do. They work out bills. I think even back in the Kodak days when, when uh, Larry, you know, Sterling drove Larry McClure's car and then uh, Finch would run the Kodak film car on, on uh, Saturday races. Purvis got hurt or something and Sterling drove for him. But uh, I've kind of known to James Finch as a kid because Sterling was buddies with him and me being from that farm. But I went to work there and went to work there for, for Finch and had nothing to do with Sterling. And then uh, he ended up racing his last cup race there and, and multiple cup races in the Mikasuki Zero Nine car. Yep, yep. And uh, honestly, I, I, I got the crew chief Sterling's last cup race ever. And super cool, super cool for me. And uh, definitely a, a race that I'll never forget because Sterling was definitely my hero growing up. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about too, Nick, was the fact that this couple couple weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, you lost a, a, a friend of yours and a friend of all of ours that I remember very well when I was hanging around down there, when I was at the racetrack. Oh, old, old Spook! I was, you know, I, I was really sad to hear about what happened to Spook. Yeah, Spook was a Spook was a extra special friend of mine. He uh, he drove our hauler at Finks Racing. He pretty much did a little bit of everything. He was kind of like dad around there. And he uh, he kept the lawn up, kept the parking lot up, kept the shop up. Uh, and at nighttime, he'd go drink beer with us. And uh, he'd keep us up on our toes about how to cheat. And, you know, he was, uh, <laughs> he, 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 you know, not, not joking about it. He was an all-around racer mm -hmm. that was very sharp about every uh, every point of the sport. And uh, 
he was a big loss to me and I, I to be honest with Jack I, I wasn't mentally prepared to call and talk about it uh, that short to his loss but or our, our, our loss of Spook's life but uh, he was an awesome guy his name was Henry Caspers and uh, I hung out with him every day that I worked at Phoenix Racing super cool guy super big character and uh, guys like that are, are not so common in, in the garage these days and uh you got to love them and, and you got to miss them when they're gone because uh, the sport moves in a different uh, type of uh, atmosphere to where characters aren't so big in the garage anymore. It's more of the, uh, uh, I, I don't know how to say it politically without just saying the yes mans that we have in the garage a lot. And uh, yeah. Luke wasn't one of those guys. He was a uh, grassroots tracer that uh, was uh, very thoughtful uh, and uh, it, from, from all aspects. He was an awesome guy. And, and I feel like I'm a better person today because I was able to work around it. Well, I'll tell you what, I remember you left me, you, you, you and the guys left me and my dad at, at Dover with him, and he was, he was, he was a character. He would, I mean, he was, he was very precise in everything he did, made sure everything was just right, and everything was like it was supposed to be. I really thought a lot of him. I had a lot of time to talk to him when I was around, so, yeah, I was, I was, it, was, it really got to me, too. Yeah, I was real close to him, and Spook was a four-time Vietnam vet. You know, he did four tours over there. So he did a whole lot for our country and, and uh, just life in general, man. He was an awesome guy. He was a, he was a big patriot and, uh, and a great racer uh, from, from driving the hauler into the garage and, and uh, putting dry ice in the car to go qualify for the Daytona 500. He could do it all, and, and, uh, and I think he would like to be remembered as that. Yeah, I think so. I think you're, you're exactly right. What's the rest of the schedule for you for the rest of the year? How many more races are you going to do with certain drivers or whatever? Do you know, or is it just one of those things that comes along? It comes along a little bit. That's a good question. Uh, I've got several more races with Paul Menard. Real pumped up about that. Uh, got this weekend in Andy and Loudon and Chicago. Uh, a little later this year, Kansas. Uh, I can't can't remember uh, exact number off the top of my head, but we got six or seven more Paul Menard. Kel Conley's got five or six more. And we're also going to race the Eldor truck race now on the dirt with uh, Austin Dillon's going to drive our car, our, our truck, and I believe uh, Danny Stockman's three nationwide team is going to do Ty's uh, truck team there. And then uh, I believe that uh, we're also going to race Austin at Pocono in a truck race too, as, as far as I know. And none of that's set in stone, but I believe that's going to happen. That's the heavy rumor. So I'm, uh, you know, wherever they want me to run at, I'm, I'm all about going to run and. And I uh, feel like uh, Austin won the Eldor race last year, definitely got a shot at that. And uh, he's the Truck Series champ, so if he runs at Pocono, I feel like we got a shot at that. So with Menard and Austin, and then I think we got a couple more open weekends. Who knows what our media department will sell. Maybe, maybe uh, Newman might drive a nationwide car or, or even uh, Austin get a race or two. But uh, definitely, uh, definitely pumped for any opportunities like that. And uh, uh, definitely think that we can get Kel Conley uh, to victory lane in 33 on his limited schedule if, uh, if the uh, stars line up for us. He's, I think he's actually testing Nashville on a cup car getting some laps today. So uh, great experience for him. And uh, he's, had, he's had definitely had some uh, moments where he's overachieved in our car. And uh, we're building that program to where uh, we think Kel can be one of the next uh, race winners on Saturday in our nationwide car. Uh, he, I, he's, a, he's a good kid. I, I talked to him at Richmond, so he, He's a, he's a real good kid. I, like, I think you got something there for the future. Yeah, I think, so. think Kel's got a lot of talent. He's from a great background. His family's awesome. And uh, we uh, we look forward to racing with him here in a few weeks. His next race is Chicago in just a few weeks. And then uh, he's got four or five more. Like I said, it's not in front of me, so I don't remember everyone off the top of my head. We, we, uh, we've got such a... Uh, revolving door drivers, but I uh, look forward to every race we get to run yeah, in the 33 or, and or whatever our number be in the truck series when we run that, and uh, we're going to go out there and compete with the best of them. Hey Nick, do you set the cars up a little differently from driver to driver for their preference? You know, that's a good question because uh, I made it sound real simple earlier where we just race a stopwatch, but honestly that's what you have to do when you get to the track. But before you ever get to the track, you, you definitely talk to drivers about the feel that they want or, or uh, different front end settings or things that have always been historic driver preferences. But uh, when you get to the racetrack, man, it's kind of, you're not really, uh, you know, the driver's definitely going to give his input that leads you in a direction that you've got to work in. But 
honestly, the, the stopwatch is the, the root of all speed, and, and, and uh, that's what we chase. And we, uh, we have uh, great engineered support simulation programs, and, and uh, then, then just old uh, uh, shock travels and, and uh, tire temperatures and tire builds that you look at that give you a direction to go in. And uh, I feel like uh, I've did that enough in my past, which you talked about earlier, working at fingers racing to where uh, I feel like I can roll the flow with any driver that comes along and uh, uh, can get along with any of them and uh, get along with some better than others but <laughs> at the end of the day we're definitely trying to uh, go as fast as we can and have a chance to win the race. Alright Nick, well we're going to let you get back to whatever you're doing. I know you're probably getting ready to go out and get something to eat and... or have you already ate? No, I ain't ate yet. I'm, I just got back to the hotel. We're staying at the Belterra Casino. I'll fix to go down there and Try some of my luck and hope I don't use it all up tonight. Save some for Friday. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Do that and go get you something to eat too. All right, now y'all have a good one. All right, man. All appreciate right. it. We'll get back with you again soon. All right, thanks a lot. All right, man. Bye. -bye. <laughs> what, what was that hand move right there? <laughs> That's your call, man. <laughs> uh, that was Let's talk racing. Yeah, that was Eddie McCall. Hey, okay. How you doing today? Good, how are you? How are things going up your way? Pretty good, pretty good. Well, well tell us, how, how did you enjoy your, your night at, at Langley Speedway when you were down here? Uh, we, we had a great time. Um, you know, a little disappointed with our finish. We thought we had a, um, a little better car than, than we got to finish. Um, you know, the, in practice, we, we were pretty happy with our the car. We just kept working on it. And, you know, it, it was handling real good in the race, and then kind of with another guy knocked the toe up. So uh, we thought we had a tire going down, so we pitted it. Um, you know, luckily, I guess the tire was still up, so we were in pretty good shape there, but we lost all that track position. So it made it tough to come back up through. Had you been to Langley before? Yeah, I, I was there last year. Okay. Now you've been around the, the K&N series or whatever they want to call it, what's been called in the past for, for a few years. How did you get your start and, and how did you get to the point you are now? Uh, well, I started, I want to say, back in 2001 or two, And, um, you know, we started at uh, Lee USA Speedway. Um, you know, my parents have owned that for 20-something years. And, um, you know, so I, I ran there weekly. And, and uh, Bush North always had uh, their opening race there, so we ended up uh, buying a car off of Martin Truex and, and made our first dive there. And we had, I, I think we finished like eighth maybe in, uh, in our first race, so kind of got us posted. Uh, we've been running as much as we can ever since. Do you, do you race anything other than the K&N cars? Do you have other races that you attend or, or, or participate in? Yeah, we, we run the American Canadian Tour. Um, we try to run that whenever we have an off weekend or, or get some free time and uh, can make it to the race. So, uh, it, it's a great little late model tour, uh, real competitive. So we have a lot of fun doing that. We get to run up at New Hampshire Motor Speedway with those guys. So uh, you don't have a lot of fun with different guys. So what is your uh, what's your favorite track to go to on the on the series? Um, I would probably have to say New Hampshire just just because we've had the most success there. Um, you know, we always look forward to going there, and um, you know, probably there Bristol and Dover. So. Well, I knew Bristol had to be in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we always get to food topic, and I figure we haven't got to it tonight. Maybe we'll get to it now. What is your favorite place to eat at through this throughout the area that you you know that you travel through racing? Favorite place to eat at? Um, Unless you're real picky like me. No, I'm not too picky. Um, I would say that probably when we go to Langley, I I try to get down to Waterman's uh, on Virginia Beach. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which what do you get there? Oh. Great. Hey, he's talking about somewhere I know. Yeah. I like Waterman's. That Waterman burger is a big burger with a crab cake on top of it. It's delicious. Well, I haven't had that yet, but uh, I don't know. Everything I've had is good there. You know, the orange crush is hard to beat that. Mm. You know, but the, uh, the crab soup they got is good. Everything. 
Yeah, it, it, about everything's pretty good there. But yeah, Langley had some good seafood. I know one of the girls that worked there. She come over after the race and brought me a big bag of scallops and shrimp. Man, I about I was about to bust wide open, man. Or, 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 or are we gonna talk food? Or are we gonna talk racing? <laughs> he, he's racing to where he can get some food. Right, that's right, right, that's right, how right, he's right, gonna man. Do. You gotta have your priorities. You gotta have your priorities. <laughs> Yeah, next time you come back here, you'll have to get up with Scott, and he'll take you out there. How's that? That would be great. I was, I was looking forward to getting out there. Hey, man, Waterman's is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll take you. I don't care. That's funny. I forgot what I was going to ask you. <laughs> they, jumped, they jumped right in. I forgot what I was going to say. Natty, I looked on your Facebook. Now, you run some truck races? Yeah, we have. Um, we've only run one truck race. And uh, at New Hampshire, it was um, it was kind of a experimental thing with NASCAR. It was they had just changed the rule in the truck series to allow the spec engines that we run the K and N cars. So um, you know we put that in there, and it was down. I want to say around 100 horse, and they kind of put on 100 pounds on us uh, just to. I don't know why they did that, but it was just yeah, something yeah. that they were trying. So um, you know, but. We um, kind of ended up getting wrecked there, so we didn't really do much more truck racing. How long ago was that? Um, probably 2009 or 10. Okay. Now, how, how involved are you in the setup of your car? I'm very involved. Uh, uh, you know, I work in the car every day. Okay. Uh, you know, basically, you know, every every part of the car I work on with with my crew chief Roly and um, I'm actually up in New Hampshire right now uh, having that, having that bow built they they hang our bodies for us so we're in the process of um, hanging the body on our car for New Hampshire which is coming up in a couple weeks so now where's your team based out of now, is this is your sure team or are you driving for somebody else um, I drive for Grim Racing and they, the team's main headquarters is um, in Weymouth, Pennsylvania, and we have a shop in Massachusetts, that's where I'm from, and um, we work on the cars out of, out of Massachusetts shop, so uh, we kind of, we get a little bit of traveling to do to every race. Yeah, that's it. Now, how did you, how did you get your start uh, in racing? Now, did, just, did your father drive, or your grandfather, or somebody? Um, my father always had uh, race cars. I think he said he had a his first race car at 13, and, and he never really drove them. He just owned them and built them. And, um, you know, he's, he's had a lot to do with racing. He, he was pioneer of the car that they went to the Indy 500. And, um, you know, they had super modifieds, which I don't know if you're familiar with those cars mm -hmm. at all, but they had big blocks with uh, wings on them. And, um, you know, he's always had those. So he had Jeff Gordon drive for him. You know, when, when he was 16 years old, so that was pretty neat to yeah, pretty cool. for that. So, I just uh, grew, basically grew up at the racetrack, so it's, uh, it's something I, uh, I always wanted to do. Now, from the, the area that you're from, and, and, and up in New Hampshire and all through that area, is really big for the modifieds. Have you ever, ever drove a modified or ever thought about driving a modified or anything like that? Yeah, I did. I did once at New Hampshire. Um, had my first start at, at, at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. So, um, you know, they're definitely a different animal, especially there where you bump draft and everything. Um, you know, always I, I always wanted to get in one at a uh, at a short track and, and really get the hang of it. I think I didn't really, um, you know, have such a great run at New Hampshire. But um, yeah, those, those things are those are wild. So. No wait a minute. You said you guys bump draft. Yeah, I mean, after they're, they're bouncing off each other, pushing them down the straightaway, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I'll say, I thought we were crazy running those carts at Langley pushing each other. That seems pretty crazy. Yeah, they, I've never been involved in anything like that until, uh, until I ran a modified there. And they when they hit you, it's, you know, aluminum bumpers just bouncing off each other, and it, it jolts the car head. So it's definitely a, something you got to get used to. So you just bump somebody down through the middle of the, the straightaway and then get back off of them? Yep, yeah, they just get off them, you know, enter the corner. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, 
that, that's why everyone loves watching the uh, the modified when they run out of New Hampshire. Yeah, they put on a great show, but I had no idea they were bump drafting each other. Oh yeah, it's pretty wild. Have you have I mean, you you won the race at Bristol? How many races have you won in the Canyon Series? Um, I think seven. And that and was Bristol one of your biggest ones, or did? Yeah, I would say so. Um, you know, we got I want, we got three wins at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and, and um, you know the first one there was was pretty exciting, just because um, you know being like you know grew up at that track, and um, you know just you know being around here. So, but definitely, you know, you go to Bristol, and, and that's on your on your list of uh, ones you want to win. Um, you know, my, my top three, I, I want to win at New Hampshire, Bristol, and Dover, so somehow we got to figure out how to get Dover wrapped up. <laughs> how tough is Bristol? It is. It's definitely a, a tough place, um, you know, especially when your car's not right on. Luckily, we showed up, you know, this year and, and had a great car and was able to, uh, to really, you know, pound at the end and, and, you know, go after the win on the last few laps, so... Uh, but when your car's not handled, we've had those before. It's not handled, it's a handful, and they're on edge for the whole race. So, but it's just a wild place. You know, we we sat there and watched cup qualifying. It's pretty cool to, to sit there and see what those guys can do at a tiny little track. So, well, you've been around the series for a long time, and, and the series, especially, I, I took a, a lot of notice this week, or this this past weekend of the youngsters that have come along in the sport and everything. What do you think about all these young guys that are coming in? Is it a different breed than what you've seen in the past coming through? What are the differences? Yeah, this, this series has changed so much. It, you know, when I started in the series, I want to say I was 18 or 19, and I was considered a, you know, a real young guy. And, and um, you know, it, it's... Or, you know, the, um, these kids now, 15 years old, they go out there and, and they just take right off and win races. It's, it's really changed so much, you know, from, you know, Dave Dion, Kelly Moore, and, and you know, all those guys, you know, Brad Leighton, you know, uh, those guys were real tough, you know, guys mm -hmm. to run against. So, um, you know, I think it'd be interesting if, uh, if the younger guys could ever race with, with those guys, because... It'd be a, it'd be a heck of a race. Yeah, well, I think the slotty guys are coming in now, and they just they're in really, really good equipment right from the start, instead of having to prove yourself in some mediocre equipment. You know? Right. Yeah. It's definitely. Yeah, you know, they're definitely very fortunate. And they, uh, you know, they're they're very lucky to be able to be in in some of the equipment they're in. Um, like you said, you know, in previous years, you'd have to you know prove yourself in in your own team car, and then maybe you get a shot in one of the, mm -hmm. one of the, you know, the better teams. But, um, you know, the sport's changed so much over the years, and, you know, uh, it's driven by the dollars. So uh, it's definitely, you know, changed the dynamic of the sport. What, you know, you look at this guy, Ben Rhodes, this kid. He's done won five races this year, four straight. I mean... It's, it, it, other than the fact that it's the equipment, I mean, the, the, where do these guys get the, the abilities to be able to go out there and run with, with a veteran like you that, you know, you've been around for a while? Yeah, they just, you know, for, for whatever reason, you know, they, they definitely have a great team. There's um, Mike Creechy, you know, heading up that operation. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, they, they, he's been successful his whole time in this, in this series, so... Um, when you have the, the depth that he does and also the people, um, you know, he's got such a great team behind him. And then, you know, he's also very talented. So, um, you know, you put those two combinations together and, and you're pretty much going to win. And, and they've proven that week after week. So, yeah, I think you can near about put his name on the trophy. Yeah. I'm just looking now. He's got a 71 point lead. Wow. So he's definitely, you know, if he keeps it up, he'll, he'll be in good shape. Cool. Well, Ed Garland, uh, thank your sponsors and anybody you want to thank and everything, and we're really glad to have you on tonight. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, just you know, thank you know, Grim Construction, Rob and Kyla Grimm for, um, you know, 
know, taking care of me and believing in me. And, uh, you know, I've got a great group of guys on my team. So, you know, I just want to thank you guys out there in Virginia. That's I'm coming to Langley. Uh, you know, we'll, uh, hopefully we'll have some... Uh, Problem. Stand by. We're just good news to report here in the next few days. So, we'll go. All right. Well, we'll get you back on here again real soon, hopefully, and we'll talk to you again. Remember, next year at Langley, Scott's going to take you down to the Waterman's. We'll get, we'll get that Waterman's burger. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> and we get to go too, by the way, right? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are going Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great one. Talk to you later. Who we got here? You don't know who this, you got this, next? This her. Right. That's right. Hmm? This is right. It says turn. Well, her, it's her last name is really right. Just say hey, Margaret. <laughs> Let's talk racing. Hello. Hey, Margaret. How you doing? This is Jack Dobson, and I've got Scott Allen and Roger Brim here tonight. How's things going with you? Uh, going just fine, thank you. Oh, good. Yeah. One of the things that I've I've been I've been excited all week about getting you on the show. Well, it's been a while. We you and I have talked a couple times, back and forth. But um, one of the things I really want I want to know about the museum. I really hadn't heard a whole lot about the museum, and then I, but by having gone through looking at your Facebook and stuff, I found out about the museum. So tell us a little bit about the museum. Oh, sure. That'd be great. Um, it's the Curtis Turner Museum of Racing Legends. It is located in Roanoke, Virginia, at the Virginia Museum of Transportation. Um, we have some artifacts there. We have a little legacy and a nice display. We have uh, some, some couple of cars there. Um, his 99 Hog there, the 56 uh, Ford. We got the 1956 Ford convertible there that he won so many races in, the number 26, and they're gorgeous. And um, we have an event there at least once a year, uh, as far as the main event goes, where we invite people to come and we have, uh, you know, different festivities during that time, on a, usually on a Saturday, mm -hmm. like from 10 to 3, that sort of thing. And we uh, usually have, uh, last time like we had um, a movies, um, different kinds of document tape documentaries. We had, um, it's a great place, you can't get bored there. It's just, it's absolutely a fascinating place to be. And the, um, we, so we also had a, a parade at the end, which is, is great. We've had one every year, and we're kind of waking up this little sleepy town here to uh, their racing heritage. <laughs> now where, now my family, my dad's side of the family is originally from the Farum, Rocky Mount area. Where exactly was Curtis Turner from? Well, um, actually, his wife, my mom, uh, Lily Ann Ross, was from Farum. And uh, my dad was actually from Floyd. Mm hmm. Floyd. He was born in Floyd, and mom was uh, born in Farum. So he drove down the mountain and everything oh, <laughs> to get to her. <laughs> well, that's cool. Let me get. And somewhere, somewhere in here, and, and I'm, you know, I've told you, I think I sent it to you a couple times in emails or text messages or whatever. That somewhere along the line, we're kin to the Turners. Now, I don't know. You might not want to claim this now. <laughs> mm, she's silent. She ain't even claiming you at all. <laughs> <laughs> Good move, Margaret. <laughs> Say that one more time. I really just couldn't hear you. Oh, Jack's trying to insinuate that he might be related to you, and you might not want to claim this. <laughs> okay. Oh, now I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> now she wishes she had it. Here. <laughs> my my dad's side of my dad's side of family was kin to the Turners. Um, Are you kidding? And my grandfather is is was from the the Farm Rocky Mount area, and he always talked to my dad about Curtis Turner, that he knew Curtis and, and all that along those lines. And that they were, somehow there was a, somehow the relate, they were related in that category. Don't know how. How about that? <laughs> so, I mean, it's just really, it was probably because you hadn't heard of, you know, the black, there's always a black sheep to every family. 
<laughs> I'm not getting a lot of respect here. I'm telling you, he, he, he never gets a lot of respect. So he, how far? He's so black. He's a he's a doggone black hole out there. I tell you. <laughs> so how long? How far away are you guys from Martinsville? From the museum to Martinsville? Uh, if you come up to uh, two twenty, we're about let's see. From Martinsville to Roanoke, like to get to the museum, it's probably about what was it, an hour and a half, Perry? Hour, just an hour. About an hour. Yeah. Perry Wright is around here for my added support. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, did you, did you did you grow up at the racetrack as a young kid? Oh yes, I grew up at the racetracks and and um, was a part of it all. You know, a lot of that racing uh, that Daddy did. Um, and uh, I really, you know, I was a baby when it all started. Uh, Mom put me in the back seat window, and um, up there, I, I believe it was a. They kept the 44 for a long time. It may have been that, and they put me in the back seat window when I was born in 47, and took off down the road to go to races. And I, you know, you know, that we had. <laughs> that's how I traveled. And. Um, then as I got older, I was five and six, I started just sort of laying in the floorboard of the car and playing in the back seat. And then when I was well, somewhat older and in school and everything, um, and Daddy was doing the Charlotte Motor Speedway, me and my brother Ross, my younger brother, um, would go to the uh, field and play in the dirt pile. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, so. Now then. Uh, go ahead. So one of the things I was going to ask you, and, and I know that you've really been working hard to get Curtis in the Hall of Fame. And yeah. what is your what is your stance on this with the Hall of Fame? I have a I have a different feeling about some of the people that have gone into the Hall of Fame. I really they 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 they're Hall of Fame people, but I don't think it's their time. I don't think it was time for them to be there. And I think it's time for them to bring guys like Curtis Turner and some of these other people in. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I think it's about time too. Uh, and of course, I, you know, I'm I'm the daughter, and naturally, I think it's way past time. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, I I know that um, you know, they're they're doing a they're doing a good job. They really are getting people in, and I think they have a good year coming up. It's going to be great. Uh, with the people that they have coming in and the, and the ones that they have already got in. And um, I really, really think <coughs> it might just really happen the next time when they have the voting panel. And we have a lot of support and a lot of interest and um, more support than, than I've ever had, you know, to get this done. And just really, really hoping we're, you know, going to get it off the ground this time. So. Have, have, do, you, do you go down around there when, when, the, when the time comes to to try to push it along or do you talk to anybody about it or what do you do to help get you know try to push his name through? Well to tell you the truth I have uh, uh, sent out emails to the people at times that I knew were on the voting panel. You can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I you know have you know I wrote a book uh, uh, called Curse Turn Racing Stats. Mm -hmm. and um, publish that um, about Daddy's Racing and that's available on my website CurtisTurnMuseum.com which I also uh, manage and I have Curtis Turner Racing Legends the page on Facebook what? I have Curtis Turner Museum on Facebook which is just the Facebook version for a quicker you know, response back to each other what? and I don't know what else to do you know, I got a museum out here and we got some cars and we got all these neat things out here and we try to have an event every year and I'm you know I appreciate anybody coming on board with another idea <laughs> and uh, support but we um we it looks like we've got even more support this year than we've ever had and um and it was so Jerry Hogan that I'm really happy to um, have uh, gotten to meet a little bit here, um, who's helping us as well and coming up with um, a really neat um, uh, logo for us to help get Daddy uh, in, uh, into the hall the next time. It's called Pops in the Hall, and he, he came up with a page for it and really appreciate what he did there on that. So, Well, that's cool. Well, if, if, you know, if that could be of any assistance along the way, and my dad, and I'm sure we, we would love to be a part of it. And we're going. To, I'm going to make an effort to get to the museum because I really want to come down and see it. Well, that would be awesome. You tell me when you're coming, and I'll be to there. That'd be great. Because I really want to be. I really want to see it. I want to see what's going on. And and um, 
and see what you know what what all that what you've got going on. Give us a little background on Curtis Turner's racing career. I mean, I you know I probably know a, a, a little bit about it because I've studied it. But how about giving us a little bit of you know where he started and and how far he went and everything. So Daddy started racing um, actually in 19, about 1946, and in my book I, I, I chronicle his racing career, and uh, I know that there's, there's speculation that he might have started in Milton, and then we, we uh, came up with, um, I'm trying to get my book out here, <laughs> and then we came up with... Um, the uh, Mount Airy, North Carolina. So we, we uh, think that that's probably where he first started in the Southwest Virginia uh, Speedway also, which um, is up here, up the mountain from uh, near, uh, near Christiansburg. I say up the mountain because Roanoke Valley is kind of, you know, down, downhill from that. And um, he actually, my mom said he actually won a race the day I was born, which was in August, August 31st. And she, um, she thought it might have been in Covington. So it's hard to find the racetracks because so many of them, actually at the time, you know, back then they, a lot of them were just um, fairgrounds. And so they've been covered over and made into other things and that sort of thing. And um, Ryan and Caton put a book together on some of the old racetracks and, um, and that's been really kind of nice, really helpful. And uh, he's um, up at uh, Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. And so we, we were sort of, you know, scratching around trying to find as many um, facts and everything as we can and pictures put your heart to come by from those times. But that's kind of when it started. And um, on Daddy's, Mom and Dad's way back uh, from their honeymoon, we, we seemed to feel like he stopped by, um, heard about a race, and that that was uh, Mount Airy, and stopped by there and did that race and in their car that they went on their honeymoon in. Wow. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, and then drove home. Um, the first race at, is that kind of claimed as um, being, the first time he actually raced was kind of claimed as being like a rough, a rough day because he, he came, kind of came in like 18th or something and he didn't really know um, exactly how to get everything going and, you know, keep up the engine the correct way and all that sort of thing. And then, from what I understood, and as a matter of fact, uh, Francis Locke kind of reiterated the same thing, and my mom, that the, the guys got together the next race and kind of told him all these things to do that would mess him up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they were such, they were such uh, clowns, you know, they were always right. teasing each other. And that's one of the things that you just love about these guys. They have ah, such a great sense of humor. So, um, anyway, he figured out and then later they had such a great laugh about it and all um then he did pick up some tips and then he started winning right away yeah. <laughs> and his his racing career spanned um till through 1968. i didn't know that now that, that, was, that was something i didn't know but now he went and he, and he was also working at charlotte motor speedway at one point is that correct he, uh, he built Charlotte Motor Speedway. That's it, yeah. He built the Charlotte Motor Speedway, and he promoted the races at the Charlotte Motor Speedway while he was there in that capacity. And he had taken first option on the land in order to get the speedway. And as a matter of fact, he was uh, he had other people on board in the very beginning, and, um, and then it was I think a couple months later, six weeks or two months later, or something that Bruton Smith came on board. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I've seen they had some show about Charlotte. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, and, and I guess your dad and somebody else kind of had a deal going, and then somehow I don't know, I can't remember how it went, but Bruton come in, and, and then your dad went over with them or something. It was, but it was pretty interesting. I, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, Margaret, uh, that was that was the way that worked out at that time. So uh, he was integral in um, the Charlotte Motor Speedway. He was also integral in trying to save it. Yeah, so there's, yeah, that's, there's a whole lot to that, <laughs> and um, and he loved it dearly, and he just it, it broke his heart when he lost it. Well, Margaret, I appreciate your time tonight. We're going to get you back on again sometime real soon, and we'll talk some more. Hopefully, I can get down. I'll let you know when I'm coming down to the museum because I would really like to meet you myself. Well, we try to plan it around Martinsville. All right. All right, so we'll do that, and we appreciate your time tonight. <laughs> 
and we'll get you back on real soon. Okay, thank you. I look forward to it. Thank, thank you. you very much. We appreciate your time. Okay. Kenzie Weston. Floyd Barron is shooting creek. That's where all the moonshine ran. Okay, I got you. I, I knew you had something going on yeah, there. That's, that's where they ran all the moonshine across the hill. Let's talk Hello? Grayson. Hello? Mm -hmm. Hello? Hey, Kenzie. <laughs> Kenzie. How you doing, Kenzie? I'm not much. How are you? Are, are you still on cloud nine after the good run you had the other night? Hey. Hello? Hello, sorry, uh, going through bad, bad signal, I guess. Um, yeah, we had a really good run at Langley this weekend. Uh, I guess I'm still on cloud nine. <laughs> Turn around. Now, was this your first time here? Second time. Second time, okay. Mm. If I went last year, uh, we didn't have quite as good as Grady's last year. I think I finished like 13th or something. Well, you 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 really had a you really had a great run the other night. I was. I was up there watching, and, and and I was really impressed. You you did a heck of a job, and I was hoping you would get by Ben Rhodes and and and, and break that streak. Yeah, I wanted that streak broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I tried. Um, right there in the middle of the race, we were just kind of riding along and laps, and um, I guess I probably could have moved him, but then I felt like uh, he he definitely has a better car than I did. Um, we were definitely up to like a second place car, but we didn't have um, quite what it Did you get some local help while you were at Langley to get the car straightened out? Local help? Yes, from some of the local drivers out there. No, <laughs> no um, last year C. Falk came and helped. Um, last year I ran for Turner and C. Falk came out and helped us um, at our test when we came there and tested. And that kind of rolled over into this year. Um, he helped me out a ton last year with just my line. and. Um, I was doing some stuff with the throttle that I didn't need to, so um, he broke some of those bad habits last year, and I just still kind of remember those. Like I always take notes on um, places, especially if I struggle, and um, he definitely helped me out a ton last year, and I just kind of remembered some of the stuff that he told me last year and brought it into this year, and I think that's uh, helped a ton this year, too. Kenzie, how did you get started in racing? What, what got you started and get you to the point that you're at now? Well, um, I was always just a tomboy, kind of, growing up. Um, I had a lot of boy cousins, and we always grew up on four-wheelers and dirt bikes. And when my dad was in high school, he, ra he raced some dirt bikes. And then when he remarried, my stepmom's um, father ran dirt track up on the city. So I was always just around racing, and um, I always wanted to do it. And my dad would never let me on a dirt bike, and um, he was just kind of being a fan at Texas Motor Speedway. They always go to the fall race at Texas, and um, there's a little fifth mile out back, and you can rent um, like a school car for like 10 laps for 50 bucks or so. And um, I just kind of, my I was living in Texas with my mom at the time. My mom brought me over to um, Fort Worth, and we got in the car, and ran some laps and I got out of the car and I told my dad, I said, Dad, this is something I, I want to do. So um, I grew up playing every sport and I was just always super competitive. And when, um, when I started racing, I knew it was something that I had to conquer, just like all of the sports that I played. Well, now, you, you drove, for, who did you drive for last year? Uh, last year I ran for Turner Scott Motorsports. Oh, okay, all right. So did you do you did did you do the, the the diversity program thing or anything like that? I never did. No, um, I guess I was fortunate enough that my dad had a trucking company. Um, when I first started off, and um, we we ran our own late models, and into last year, Turner helped us out a ton last year, and um, they were able to work something out where I could run Tanner last year, and I just um. 
I was kind of fortunate enough to run my own late model stuff, but um, the diversity program is awesome. There's been a lot of people come up through it, like Daryl Wallace and Kyle Larson. Um, I just, I never went that route for some reason. I, I can't tell you why. I just, uh, it was something that I just ran my own late model. So now you're living in the Charlotte area now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I moved there when I was 17. Oh, you've been down there a little while then. So what do you do during the week? Do you work somewhere at a shop? Um, no, I, I, I travel a lot. Though. My boyfriend races too, so if I'm not racing, um, we're always, I'm always helping him at his shop. Um, and I'm down at Florida a lot too. My um, Ben Kennedy Racing is out of Daytona, Florida, so I, am, I go down there quite a bit. Um, so I'm always helping him at his shop. So who's the better race car driver, you or your boyfriend? <laughs> I don't know about that. He's won a lot of races. He's um, he's pretty. He's he's he, pretty. He's okay. Uh, don't make her answer the question. Okay, <laughs> that's what she's trying to do. Not answer this question. I'm just trying to stir the pot a little bit. I was 14, so he has 10 years on me. So um, what kind of what does he race? Uh, super late models. Oh, okay. All right, all right, but I ain't gonna ask you his name. I wasn't. I was gonna ask his name, but I thought I better not do that. <laughs> That's okay. So how did how did how did you you know you had to you, you had to have a lot going on with you to be able to hook up with Ben Kennedy and his group to take his the car that he was driving last year and and, and take it over and, and 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 you're doing a good job in it. So how did that come about? Well, um, last year um, we were both part of the NASCAR Next program, and uh, we kind of become friends. And I, I heard that he was moving up to trucks, and um, I kind of just asked him, I was like, "So, what are you going to do with your cane and stuff? Or are you going to sell it or whatnot?" And he's like, "I don't know. I don't want to get rid of my guy. Uh, maybe we can work something out." And I know um, they had a lot of people call them, and kind of at the at the end of the day, um, his, his mom, Lisa, is. His uncle Jim always came to a lot of the races, and I guess one of the races, I caught their eye somewhere, and uh, they decided that they wanted to help me out this year. So I am very thankful for them. Um, I mean, that's gonna be pretty cool, though. A lot of other options to put in their car, and they picked me. Um, I just can't thank them enough for this opportunity this year, and. Um, Hopefully, I'm making them proud. So I think you're doing a great job. Yeah, I think you're doing you a, did good, a good job. But you know, you can't have you, you you can't help but have a, a, a good situation when you got um, the France family helping you out. For sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I just you know I just, I didn't want to say that too much. I, you know, I just I, that's a pretty I'm good deal. About me trying to stir something up. <laughs> I'm so speechless about it. You know what I mean? Uh, they don't help very many people, and it's just really. What? Um, yeah, it's got to be a big honor. It's very humbling that they've decided to help me. So. Well, it has to be good for you. I mean, you think about it. It's it's got to be. It's got to build your build your reputation, build your status, because they are involved with you. Mm -hmm. For sure, it definitely helps. And I mean, uh, they're they're just such, they're such nice people. Even last year when I didn't even know them, uh, me and Lisa became pretty good friends, and um, they just Waiting for turn, so I was always at the truck races, and when Finland ran his truck races, and I'd watch the truck races with Lisa. It's so funny because she, uh, she's always been on the ISD track, so the racing part of it, uh, it's so funny the questions that she asks. So um, they're just awesome people, and I just can't thank them enough for uh, helping me out this year. Now, the way I see it, and, and, and we're going to go back to something you said earlier, but the way I see it, you're the better driver than your boyfriend because you were getting in. <laughs> I guess I've just gotten the. Uh, the better chances. <laughs> That's a, there you go. That was, that was the better answer there. Who's better than who? But uh, definitely gotten a couple breaks here and there, and uh, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully one day we'll both be racing in Cubs. Uh, you give them. That would be cool. That would really be good. <laughs> I want to see that. You know, and eventually, eventually, you can tell me who he is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, what do, what do you have? If you started on plans for next year? I mean, we're we're working day in and day out on something for next year. Um, 
no plans, um, but we are working day in and day out to get something put together. So um, hopefully by the end of the summer, um, before the season ends, hopefully we'll have something put together for next year. And uh, I don't know, hopefully, hopefully there's some truck races in the near future uh, for next year, maybe a season or even half a season or five or six races. But um. That was my next question. Do you got? Do you have something in the works on that? Here is what I'm focusing on, and um, hopefully we can. We started off our season pretty rough, and I think we're ninth in points right now. So we need to keep running consistent like we had the last two weeks, and um, finish strong and finish in the top five points. Well, I'm just gonna say one thing. I'm I'm, I'm glad that you're you're doing well, and, and and you don't have Mike Herman spotting for you because you know. That could be a detriment. You don't like Mike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do like Mike. That, that's a joke. I know him and Kelly really good. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you were scaring me to be put in the category with her boyfriend. No, no, she was getting ready. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jack, Jack, you trying to stir up trouble. See what happens. Yeah. Can you help me with that? Because I don't know what to do. Because I don't know what to do. Because I don't know what to and he's awesome. I feel like he's moved on to bigger and better things. But um, I still see, every time I talk to him, or every time I see him at the track, he always stops, stops and says hi. So um, him, him and Kelly are very, very good people. Yes, they are. I, I, I like them both. And, and, I, and I'm glad you got a better spotter because, you know, he, he does I'm have... A, has she got in on the, on the what is it, the little RC racing? Oh, yeah. You, do you have an RC car? Oh no! Mm -mm. You know, Mike and them have a great big RC race over at his house all the time now. I know. I heard he, he told me that he made one in the shop. Not yeah, the yeah, they got it. They, and I even heard they even got hero cards made up. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> it's big time. So over there. So if you ever get down there and get a hero card of Mike Herman or Tab Boyd, none of those guys that are over there doing that race, you get me one, okay? Okay, I will. I will. All right, go ahead and thank your sponsors and everybody you want to thank before we get you off the air and get you let you get back to your to your life that you know that you might be having other your boyfriend might be visiting or something <laughs> I don't know. He might if, if it is. And guy. he and he might want you to help him with getting the car set up or something. I don't know. I might. I, I can try my best, but I don't know if you want me setting up a car. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll be just you know I'm just playing along here. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I know quite a bit, but I wouldn't trust myself to do it on my own. But, uh, well, thank you guys for having me. And I just can't thank Ben and his family and Alpine Star and Blue Nine and, um, oh goodness, there's so many people that I could thank. But, um, I just can't thank you guys for having me on tonight. Well, and uh, I hope you have a good rest of the night. Well, we appreciate you taking time out and uh, good luck the rest of the season. We're going to get you back on here again. and. Maybe the next time I'll get some information from Kelly and Mike about you and find out what you know what they know about you. <laughs> oh goodness! All right. <laughs> you in trouble now, girl. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you later. Thank you for your time. Thank you guys. All right, bye. bye. Yeah, nice girl. Yeah. I'm the. Is he on the line? No. Oh, he's gonna pop back in a couple minutes. Okay. No, I just. I I knew about her way a oh, long yeah. time ago, and. Uh, I still don't know who her boyfriend is, but I'm gonna find out. I will find out before the night's over. Well, she's keeping that under wraps. Yeah, she don't want. We're, we're gonna release that live. Yeah. <laughs> Text so, my. So if you're no, I'll get Kelly to. But if you're listening, kids, should, you know, it's coming. We should call him. Wait a minute, there he is. Daniel right Hemrick. Huh? Daniel Hemrick. Ah. Oh, I know him. <laughs> Daniel Hemmer, he runs the Pass series. We should just call him. I'm gonna get him <laughs> on the show next week. Next I wonder week, what he'll say who the next week, driver is. Next week, I'm gonna. Well, if he's smart, he'll say her. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he but does. if he's a dumbass like <laughs> us, we probably won't. <laughs> well, you know, we don't have we don't set the standards very high. There, you know? <laughs> One of my friends come by the shop today, he's a the UPS driver, and he's like, man, I watch your shows and stuff. He's like, man, I see you guys, you know, getting on each other. I hope y'all are good friends. <laughs> <laughs> I started laughing. Uh, I see we, 
uh, so maybe y'all should tell each other. At least we know it from watching the show. But that just that just makes the whole show. Watching <laughs> each other. Well, you know, we got the you gotta you gotta keep things live. Then. No. But we still waiting on Brian to call. Well, he called it nine after. I said, "Give me five minutes." So <laughs> you know how he is. He's down there in Nag's head, you know, playing in the sun. Well, what can I say? There you yeah, go. there he is. Is this Brian Morehouse? Yes. What are you up to? I thought it was Domino's. Damn it. <laughs> uh, you know, I got to work with this guy here beside me. Yeah, I hear you. What's been going on? Oh no, you tell us. You down there having a good time. Oh, I know, man. It's about time. Got to look, got to wait for my for a couple of weeks, and uh, I'm getting the accident to join ourselves. So, so, a couple of weeks? So, so you get away from racing, and yet you call into the show. What the <laughs> heck is going on, man? I don't get to Roger. Uh, Roger's doing me a big favor, so I said, you know, I'll call in, see how things are going, and check on the guys. Because I think y'all are my buddy. But we are, we are, but you know, we just, buddies, right? uh, but you know, I, I'm going to tell you straight up, and I'm going to be honest with you, if I was on vacation to Nags Head or Myrtle Beach or anywhere like that, I ain't calling the show. You're not going to call? No. But I want to know about these kids you had, don't, don't you have some nephews down there, nieces or something? Yeah, yeah, I got them out on the beach, and uh, they're down there enjoying themselves, and I thought we were going to have a little rumble last night, because boys, uh, you know, after these 16 year old girls, where are these kids thinking, man? The undertow out there, they just straighten up. How bad is that down there? Is it really bad? Huh? Is the undertow really bad down there? Uh, yeah, it's, it was really bad. Uh, we were out there yesterday, and one kid got way too far out there. And, uh, we basically ran out there and got the kid. But, you know, I mean, you, you got to think, man, Dax has been found a year. you got to watch yourself. People don't realize that. Now, I was really, really impressed with your, you were work, you were actually doing some work the other night at the racetrack. He was busy. You were actually busy. I mean, I, I saw, or you were faking it real good. He was media man. They put me in a new position, um, doing the uh, production and marketing and everything, and uh, I had a good time doing it. I missed being on pit road, but. Uh, yeah, man, it was a lot of fun. I was a little nervous. I got to see y'all guys quite a bit. It gave me a chance to free up a bit and talk to y'all guys more. Yeah, there you go. See, you can, you, you, there's a benefit to having to see me at the racetrack. Yeah, I'm so, well, but I'm sorry you had to see Scott. Well, you know, Scott, uh, you know, he came around a couple of times. Uh, he was trying to be a funny guy there one time and started coming at me uh, in a camp cart, <laughs> and I thought he was losing control. Well, you, <laughs> hey, 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 Brian. <laughs> Hey, Brian, if, if he was coming at you with a champ cart, you should have just stood still. He won't go and hit you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, did you watch the right? Here he is. He's got his helmet on and everything else. I'm thinking, who is this kid? <laughs> <laughs> I know he didn't know who I was for a minute. Well, it, 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 did you watch his race by any chance? Yeah, I watched his race. Did so you? We always stop the watch. And well, I congratulate, and you probably want to congratulate him too. He did pass one car. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he did really good, man. I tell you what, uh, the champ carts, we always, uh, whether we come with the k &N or we come with the uh, Southern Modifieds, everybody always stops and watch those guys. I mean, there's, what, 25 of them, 30 sometimes, and uh, we just love the way them guys can drive. I guess that's like their uh, Talladega or Daytona, you know what I'm saying? Did you, did, did, did you see any of, uh, of the guys that were in that race? Now, he has like four or five teammates. Yeah, I noticed the uh, color uh, schemes on them were pretty similar. Yeah, he has four or five teammates, and I've talked to each and every one of those teammates. <laughs> and all of them told me they ain't running with him. <laughs> so, so really, he just got his car painted like him. <laughs> yeah, it, and that's what they said, too. <laughs> They let him hang out at the shop, and then they let him come along, but they don't dress with him. Well, and I want you to know something, too, Brian. He has his uh, fan club here tonight, too. He does? Yeah, all one person. Pack <laughs> 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 the house. <laughs> what y'all uh, think of the race, man? Did y'all think it was a pretty good race? That was yeah. a great race. We just had Kenzie Rustin on here a few minutes ago, and I was, I'll have to be honest, I was kind of hoping she'd pull it off. 
Well, I'll be honest with you, man. I wouldn't be surprised if by the year's off if she doesn't pull one or two off because uh, she was coming on strong. I was over there in turn four doing pits in, and uh, she uh, she had a strong car, and she was giving them, uh, you know, giving them a run for their money, and then the 98 caught up with her, and, uh, you know, they battled it out. I think she ended up finishing third. Third, yeah, she was third. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, the last two races, the uh, one in Pensacola and, of course, the one in Limelight, she has really given them, <clears throat> given them a run for their money, and I wouldn't count that girl out. She's uh, She's got a, she's, she's doing really well, uh, got good equipment with her, got a good team and everything, and uh, I think you're going to see that name a little bit more and more here in the future. So what's it going to take to knock Ben Rhodes off the throne there? A faster car? Mm -hmm. Right now? So what's it going to take to knock Ben Rhodes off the, the throne there? This kid is on fire. I don't know, man. I think the kid's really got it going. I think uh, Turner Scott's got the, uh, I think they got the best equipment, some of the best equipment around. they got a uh, great talent with their crew chiefs. Who, uh, crew chiefs have been, you know, ex-race car drivers. Uh, mm -hmm. They've got a good stable of young talent. Um, yeah, it's going to take a lot to really knock him off. Uh, I tell you what, he has been strong. What was that, four in a row for him? Yeah, yeah. Have y'all already started engraving the trophy? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they started engraving the trophy yet, but uh, I tell you what, I think that uh, there's a good possibility that, that that will be started. But uh, I tell you what, he's um, he's really done really good this year. He's got good good equipment with him, and Mark McFarland is his crew chief, and that's a name that we know of. Uh, yeah. Uh, old Virginia boy that's been racing, been in racing for years, and was with Junior Motorsports when they first started up. Um, I tell you what, it's just a uh, good talent. They, they seem to work well together, and uh, I think uh, people are going to have to start doing their homework to be able to knock them off top. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. I looked a while ago, and he's got a 71-point lead. He started with a 54-point lead before the race. Now he's got a 71 point lead. Now, how many races are left? Uh, I want to say there's seven. Is there um, seven? I, between jumping between all these series, man, uh, I want to say they've got seven left. Um, you know, they're into their second half of the season now. So, uh, yeah, they still got a little ways to go. And, you know, there's anything can happen. Anything can happen there. But, uh, Tina's got a lot of good young talent. I remember uh, we were at Pensacola and somebody came up to me, one of the fans, and they were like, oh, there's no big names in here. I'm like, no, these names get bigger and bigger every year. I said, nobody really knew too much about Chase Elliott when he was competing. Then all of a sudden, look where he's at. How about Bubba Wallace? Nobody had ever really heard that name down in the South or anything. Kyle Larson. So he's a big name in the truck series. So Tina's a real big stepping ground for these up-and-coming young drivers. And, uh, yeah, a lot of good, uh, a lot of good talent in there, and you know they're moving up nationwide in uh, trucks every day. Hey, Brian, don't forget Kyle Larson was just in there two years ago. Yeah, you know I forgot that name, and you know he went out west this weekend with the K and M series. Um, they raced out there in Sonoma. He uh, got in a car and uh, won a race out there. So I'm telling you, uh, a lot of good cat talent. I mean. Corey LaJoy, uh, I think he's going to be getting into a bush, uh, or bush, man, I'm sorry for saying that, into <laughs> a, I'm sitting here, drinking bush. Uh, he, wow. He's going to get into a nationwide uh, car this year. Um, this you know, weekend. That kid's got a lot of talent with him, coming from a racing family with the LaJoy's, and uh, yeah, you, you've got a lot of talent, man, that comes to K&N, and, and you know, like, like I said, getting into his trucks nationwide series. All right, well... We're going to get to let you go and get back to drinking your bush and going on the on the beach. And You better go check them boys. They might be out there fighting somewhere. Well, they better not be. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I'll see you all next week, and uh, you all have a good week, and we'll talk to you later. All right, man. All right, man. Have a good one. Hey, hey, man. Well, another Wednesday gone. And that's it. I wonder if I keep progressing in the, in the wing champs. You think I'll get a K&N ride next year? Hey, we might get uh, two. Right, on, the time, on the time schedules he's on right now, we might, we might get two of these. <laughs> <laughs> you get one for Jack? Yeah. <laughs> if Jack had a pocket, I'd have stuck one in there, too. And it wouldn't have stayed. <laughs> we'll tape it on him next Just time. Just to let you know, it wouldn't have stayed there. <laughs> Did somebody come up to me at the racetrack? You're on that show with Scott. 
I was with one of your people over there in your in your area over there. Oh yeah. And I said, yeah. Look like? Uh, he was a kind of a tall guy. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, you're on that show with Scott. And I said, yeah. I said, well, don't tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> So you got recognized through me, see? Yeah, but how I many? I when you were at Martinsville, you got recognized through me. I'm not. We're, I'm starting now. You, but the thing is, you were you were at Langley. <laughs> Martinsville's a little bit bigger than that. But you know, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Now, how many autographs did you sign the other night at the at the racetrack? Just the one for you. You didn't, you didn't <laughs> sign nothing for me. <laughs> sign nothing for me. <laughs> but you know, did you get your picture taken with anybody? No, okay. I didn't ask somebody to get my picture taken. I had somebody come over and ask me, Cody, I need to take a picture. Roger, did you? Take a picture. Did you? Did you? Can you verify this? Or yeah. Did you? Yeah, I can did you get somebody to ask Roger, him take for his picture. picture? Did you take a picture? No, it wasn't Roger. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't Roger. It cost me five hats to get him to do it, though. <laughs> who, who, was, who was it? Maddie Ryan's mom. No. no. You want me to come over and take a picture with Maddie? Mm. So see, was, see, was it, Maddie sweet on you or something? No, I mean, what does she, what she, what she park on the back stretch under caution for? I, I don't know, but uh, you, I, we, we, we won't go into all that. <laughs> what what else was it? What did you see, Cody? What did he do? Yeah, the throttle got hung on it. Oh really? Oh. Yeah, because the carburetor is on there sideways on those things. It's got a 350 carburetor. Well, it's got this linkage that flips around. And the damn thing, you can do it by hand and get it to stay, but it's stuck. Mm. Wow. Yeah, they're actually carrying up to after hours this weekend fabrication and having the snout put on it. And up, so. It didn't look that bad when he hit the wall, but it, it bent mm -hmm. everything on the right front there. Mm -hmm. So they're going to put a new snout on it this, within the next week or so. Mm -hmm. But yeah. All right. I thought you well, that one did well. You weren't there early enough. Did you catch Brennan? He goes out. They started doing the first practices. Loopy. Oh really? I didn't. I wasn't mm -hmm. here for that. Then he did it during the race too, didn't he? Yeah. I remember. Him and Sergio got into it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't, didn't. I couldn't see it. I was at the wrong end of the track. Yeah. Somebody was a little impatient. Sergio. Mm -hmm. He was the one behind. Oh, go say it. He's funny, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I will say for us, it, the, the racetrack tightened up, I guess, with all that Goodyear rubber down. Yeah. You yeah. were going fast enough to figure it was tight. <laughs> well, yeah. When he went, hey, when he went like tight. this, it didn't move as badly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we enjoyed the show tonight. <laughs> we'll I'm going to have to get some big cars. One Jack can get in. Yeah, we're gonna have a race. <laughs> hey, you guys got five cars. Come on, get him out there. Have you seen the size of the cart? Well, cool it. Put more air in the tires. <laughs> they ain't got nothing to do with the seat. They only make them so wide. Ooh. <laughs> well, your head gets in it, so I can... <laughs> Well, there's plenty of room up here. What would you think of all our people we had on the show autograph the hat for That's us? That cool. thing. I like that. And you, we even got a personal I, one there from. I think we ought to hang that up somewhere. But I got my own personal one. Yeah, I see you did. Mm -hmm. And my dad got one too. Yeah. I didn't get one. I, you weren't anybody to be known. Yeah, you? well, you know. I was too, too, busy, too busy getting the picture taken. Yeah, trying to go Maddie right. I was. I was. Well, I, are you gonna have her? What I was really. What I was really right. too busy doing was hanging around you. So you were in good company. Because of all them people over there, I was scared they were going to jump you. <laughs> <laughs> Think he was going to have a fan uprising when when, tear when, off when, his clothes when, or something? When your own teammates say, I ain't running with it. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them had so much fun at a racetrack. And one of them was a girl that was, I know she couldn't have been no more than 15, 14, 15, 16 years old, somewhere in that yeah. category. Was she the short one or the tall one? She was one? the one that was behind you. Not the guy's daughter, but the other one down on this end. Tori. I don't know what her name was. Yeah, Tori. And I asked her, I went down and asked her, and I said, you, you going to push him to the front? She said, I ain't pushing you. I ain't pushing you. <laughs> I ended up pushing her. <laughs> I don't know about him over there, Jack. I don't either, but it was, a, it was a lot of fun. It was fun to be out there. 
listen to everybody talk trash to you. <laughs> I, I do. I will, tell you, I will tell you a lot of the K&N guys love watching you guys out there racing. Mm -hmm. You know, because the, some of these guys have run in that type of car or something close to it. And then watching you guys get out there and doing all that drafting, you know, it's just a neat thing for them to watch. Yeah, it is a ton of fun. It's fun when you can work with somebody and you just... The problem is, is you just can't do it by yourself, and and it's it's a in some ways it's a bad thing, in some ways it's a good thing. But uh, I, I did tell one of the drivers that you had get a free Wendy's triple on the bottom of your car if you can see this, <laughs> but nobody got you upside down. No, no, you get upside down on that thing, you're gonna get hurt. Yeah. I mean, there's been a couple people. Nobody's been hurt this year, but last year, I mean, a couple years ago, uh, this one guy broke his back. Hey. We'll, st we'll tell the other Scott about that when got the next racing season. <laughs> wow. See how many times he comes upside down? <laughs> yeah, Scott it ain't going to be but once, I think. Uh, You're going to turn around and go the other way again. <laughs> Is he going to play race with you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if he's coming back or not. I'm sure maybe he will. I don't know. His, li his lips are getting tighter, you notice uh, over there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need to go home and watch Duck Dynasty. Oh God, you're stuck in with Duck Dynasty. Man, I gotta watch Duck Dynasty. You should call them and see if we can hook them up and get them to be on some sponsorship. Duck stuff. Dynasty, the Moonshiners. Well, you already got that on that part of your family already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh oh, and yeah, we ain't got nobody else gonna be on show tonight, are we? <laughs> this is Jesse. <laughs> Let's talk racing. Pretty good. It's too late now. Uh, hang on a second for me, please. Somebody calling this late tonight. Pooters. Oh, no. Anyway. All right. All right. Good night. Wind this turkey shoot up. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a hold of Daniel Hemrick this week. So, uh, so we have the one. Uh, Scott Allen fan, go out and wave to you. <laughs> <laughs> down lower, down lower. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I think that's enough said for the night. Yeah, we'll catch good. everybody <laughs> next week. Well, let's hey. talk Scott Allen racing. Oh no. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Races. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. Hi, this is David Plenz, driver of the 33 NASCAR Late Model. 2011 Old Dominion Speedway Track Champion. Thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV. I'm Sam Hunt, driving a 42 car. I want to thank Let's Talk Racing. Hi, my name is Natalie Sather. I drive the 94 K&N Lady Eagle Safety Wear, Butler Built Seats, Bell Helmets, Hooker Harness Seat Belts, number 94 at South Boston Speedway. Be sure to listen to Let's Talk Racing TV.